technique for finding an object. Um, I guess the best thing to do for me is to uh, introduce myself. I'm Gene Robinson. They've called me a lot of names in the last 15 or so years, but uh, they've called me the grandfather of uh, Drone SAR. So, I mean, that's a good thing. I've got a, a pretty good extensive experience doing search and rescue work. Uh, I'm currently credited with 17 saves and recoveries right now using drones only. Uh, I kind of look back, uh, uh, you know, past the drone thing and, and I'm probably up around two dozen, but, you know, I only count the ones that I'm doing with drones. So we'll jump right off into how we most effectively utilize our tools, the drone tools, when the only thing that we really collect is data, and that data is in the form of images. The images are typically JPEG images, uh, which most cameras make. They're either uh, they're, they're listed in megapixels of uh, anywhere from 8 to 20 megapixels, and we're going to start seeing higher numbers there. We've already pushed past 20, and there are DSLRs now that, that produce 42 and 50 megapixels, which are really going to help us out in the long run. But the important thing to remember about a JPEG is they are compressed to a point where you can see them. Uh, a camera takes what's known as a raw image, and then built into the camera is a compression engine that converts it to a JPG type picture that we can we can view now. The human eye can detect around 12 million colors. The JPEG image itself can contain 16.8 million colors. Uh, so you might think that we might be leaving a little bit on the table there, uh, and we could be missing something. And what Locate does is Locate takes every one of those colors into account which allows us to make that data that we collect significantly more important because we can see, or the, the machine can see all of the colors that are available in there. And we can, we can inadvertently include them in, in our, our search method, which is just fine. You know, if we can't see it, the machine can, and we, we, we include it in the range that we select, that's great. And uh, then we have another thing that we have to deal with uh, if you're a male, you may have some sort of colorblindness to a certain degree. I know I do. I have red, green, yellow colorblind, believe it or not. Uh, so the image on your left, you should see the number six. The image on your right, you should see the number seven. If you don't see the number in those bubbles, then chances are you have some sort of color deficiency. Doesn't make it bad, doesn't hurt you or anything like that, but a lot of people don't know that. And it can affect your ability to be what we call a squint. Uh, a squint looking over images and trying to find colors in that 16.8 million. So there's another factor to consider if you have people who are uh, color deficient and looking at images that, that could be a problem. Interestingly enough, women very rarely have this condition. So, and I've always said this, and even in my book, that if you can find a, a, a woman who can sit down and, and uh, analyze images for you, do so, because they do a pretty good job at it. Okay, so let's jump off into Locate. You should be able to see my entire screen right now. And I'm going to hide that right there. And we'll go through some of the, uh, the, the major points that we're going to go through. There's some that we're going to skip, but we will cover those later in a more advanced training. So we'll start up here at the top. And if you'll look, we've got the mission selection right here. And whenever you do select new, <clears throat> it will clear the parameters and you can start from fresh. Uh, if you have a mission that you have been working on and you've saved it, you can open it and continue working the way you normally would. And then obviously you have the save, which would save any of your work as you've gone through it. And then the save as, which essentially makes a duplicate of the project that you're working on 
so that it, if something is similar, you can use it and continue on making changes to the, the copy of it and keep your original search pristine. And then in view right here, these are two automated functions or advanced functions that we'll get into later on the wrap and the, the wrap sweep. So that'll be on down the line. Plugins. Plugins are tools that are available within Locate that can really, really ease your job. The definition and description for each one of these is on the website. I won't take up your time going through each one of those, but uh, these are very cool little tools that will help you when you're doing your search or working with a lot of images. And then help, obviously, is pretty self-explanatory. You've seen that. You can register your copy. You can see information about the copy that you have and the version number and then the help itself is the f1 key or that button right there you do need an internet connection to go to the help so keep that in mind all right so let's jump down into the screen mission name you can name it whatever you like the results folder. Now, what I like to do on the results folder is I like to set it up so that it's a project. You have your project in the topmost folder. You can name it anything you want. You can name it the same as this one. In this particular case, it's Embry-Riddle Search Scenario. We did some work with them, and they have a good data set, so we're going to use it. The results folder is where we put the imagery where Locate will put all of its results that it finds. The reports will all be right there. So it makes it real easy to find those, all those items. And we'll look at this real quick. Here's the Embry-Riddle search scenario right here. And you can see that it's already produced a, a subfolder called targets. And if there were any other reports in there, it would also include those as well. So you can select that, select folder, and then it will show up right here with the complete path name. Now, the mission images, it's important to let locate know where the images are. So again, the same thing, you would select that. We'll go to the Embry-Riddle search missions, and there's our images, and we can select that folder, and it will also show up full path right there. As far as search method is concerned, we're going to be using the color range. That's the only method right now that is available to you. We are going to have others that will be coming up later on down the road, but for right now, it's just color range. CPU threads. If you have a computer that runs a multi-threaded processor, you can use as many as you want of those. The default to this should be set to three. That'll give you the optimum speed for systems and be able to keep everything running smoothly. The next area here is the spectrum databases. Now we're, we're gonna go into this a little bit more detail. And what that does is it allows you to add your spectrum databases, the colors that you selected, whether they're red, blue, green, whatever the, the situation is, you build those and you can save that as a file. And that file is available for use anytime afterwards. You can use it to set up other colors. Uh, it's a way to save things that works. One of the things that we'll be doing is uh, on the website, uh, locate.life, we are gonna set up a download area where we will upload and make available to our users databases, color databases that we have used in the field that have worked for us. So it gives you a little bit of a head start. You can start working on your own color databases, but uh, some of the very specialized databases that we have access to or the, the colors that we can build databases from will be made available to you. So that's a pretty special thing that, that we're doing at Locate, kind of help you get kicked off. And, and we'll go into this a little bit more as we build it. But uh, from there, we'll just continue on. Max pixels per cluster right here. This is one of the ways that you will reduce your false positives. 
One of the things that uh, we have to note that you set this minimum pixel per cluster to one and it will scan each individual image down to the pixel level. This is really powerful stuff. When you consider that you have 20 million pixels in an image and Locate can go through all of those pixels to see if you get a match from the colors that you want, that's some pretty powerful stuff. So, but by the same token, you obviously you can match a lot of pixels. So one of the things that we give you as a tool is the ability to increase the number of pixels to search. So if you have uh, a t-shirt, for example, that is red, and uh, you want to look for something that has two or three or four or five pixels that are touching, that are in close proximity to each other, then you can filter out some of the smaller noise type items that you might pick up while you're searching for that color. And this will become more apparent as we go through the process. Now, the max pixels per cluster right here is another way to help you rule out false positives. So for example, if you're over water, it's blue water, or even say for example, you're looking for blue and there are blue tarps everywhere. You know, the blue tarp that you buy at the hardware store. Well, that's gonna be more than 500 pixels, okay? We don't wanna look at those because we know those are blue tarps. So what we'll do is we can set this number to anything we like. We can set it to one, we can set it to a thousand. It doesn't make any difference. But if the target that locate finds exceeds this number, it will ignore it and pass it by. So this is very important to remember as you go through it because sometimes you might think, oh, hey, it, it missed this one because it's right there and it's just big and blue as it could be. Well, if it's over this number right here, it's not gonna circle it. So something to remember. Now the cluster alarm <clears throat> operates much the same way in that it gives you a visual cue if locate is finding a bunch of those. It starts flashing and letting you know, hey, I am picking up a bunch of noise and you need to check this out and stop. It allows you to stop the sweep, stop the scan, so you can adjust your colors or you can adjust your parameters so that you're not getting as many false positives. This is what we're trying to do, is we're trying to drill down into the picture and reduce the number of false positives to get to what we wanna get. Okay, the sweep, this is an automation function, and the automation functions, as I said before, will be up for an advanced training session. So we'll go ahead and continue on with the bird dog method that we were talking about. Uh, the boundary color, locate draws circles around targets, every target that it hits. So if you're like me, if you're shooting on a very light background or if you have a bunch of pictures with a very light background, yellow may not be the best color. However, maybe a darker color would be. So I can select whatever color I want and put it in here and it works great. Okay, so I've selected my boundary color and it's gonna be black in this particular case. Now, the next four items are informational items. It tells you the process is running, how many are running, the current attempts, again, this is an automated, automation function, and if you had set up locate to run automatically for three, four, or five attempts, it will tell you which attempt it's on. The images processed right here will give you a running count of the images that it has processed so far and how many it has to go. Now, the images saved is very important. If Locate starts finding objects in the pictures, then images saved will start ticking up. And the images will should be less than the number of the images processed. It may be the same, and if it's the same, it means that you're getting a lot of false positives and you need to slow down. Just another indicator there 
that you might want to retune your color to, to try to make it a little bit more defined. So let's jump into what we'll do to get that color that we want to get and we want to go search for. One of the cool things, is, and I just selected viewer to begin with, and in the viewer, we will open an image. We'll go to our Embry-Riddle search mission, and many times we have a sample that our user or, or our victim, our lost victim, was seen wearing. Sometimes that it could be a closed circuit TV picture, it could be a, a family portrait or whatever. You know, we just sometimes we have that. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes all we have is a description. Uh, the victim left wearing, you know, a red hoodie and green pants. He was dressed up like a Christmas elf or something. I don't know, but you'll you'll have that information available to you. So you can take any color and use it as a sample to begin with. In this particular scenario, our victim was wearing a blue hat and had on a green and gray jacket. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that picture to build a color spectrum or palette to work with them. Okay. So we've brought the picture up. The color select mode that we've got right now is single pixel. And that's fine. We'll start with that, but I'm going to show you that the single pixel may not be the right one to use. So if we go over into the picture, if you'll notice on the left-hand side, just below archive, flag, generate, report, selected folder, you'll see the numbers X and Y move, and then just below that, you'll see a pixel value. The pixel values are digital pixel values. That is colors expressed in red, green, blue values. That's what makes up the 16.8 million colors that are in a JPEG image. And we are sitting over a blue pixel right now that is 3587207, and that is RGB. The red channel is 35, the green channel is 87, and the blue channel is 207. So that tells you with this particular image, we've got a real high value in the blue side of the blue channel. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom way in to this particular image by using the mouse wheel. On if you have a mouse wheel on your on your mouse, you can roll it forward. If you don't have a mouse wheel, you can hit the plus key or hit this button and zoom in. And we want to zoom right on in, right on down to the pixel level because that's what we're operating in, right? That's the, the level that we're operating in. Now, again, we can go over these huge squares now that they're, they're zoomed in and see the value. See the values change on the left-hand side? So the blue in a JPEG image is not what you would think RGB would be. You might think that, well, the red and the green should be zero, and the blue should be 255. That's the maximum value that can be in those channels. Well, if you did that, we would look like a cartoon because there would be no gradation, there would be no shades, there would be no hue and no saturation. So you're going to learn a little bit about JPEGs and how pictures are taken as you go through this process. So what we're going to do is we've landed on this blue color right here. We kind of like it. So I'm going to right click on it. I right click with the mouse and as you can see, it puts it in that box right there. And there's the value 2072194. Okay. So from here, I'll tell you what, we're going to back up just a little bit. I'm going to clear this and I'm going to show you what 
I like to use, we're going to zoom out a little bit, okay, and we're going to, this time we're going to select over here on the left hand side, the color select mode here, we're going to select area. So we're going to do the same thing, we're going to zoom in just like we did before. We use a little hand with the left button to, to center the image, and we're going to zoom right on down into it. Okay, so we got, it's, it's pretty pixelated. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to pick an area. So I'm going to right click with my mouse, and I'm going to draw a window just like that. Boom. Now, in the box over here, what, it, what Locate has done is it has averaged all of those pixels for me. So I got probably nine pixels of varying shades and colors. So it averaged them together for me. And, and that's going to give me a closer representation of what I'm looking for. So from there, whether I use single pixel or not, or the area, doesn't make any difference. The next step would be to create a range. So we will press the Create Range button, and we need to give it a name. So we're going to call it Blue Hat. And because I've done this once or twice, I'm going to call it Blue Hat 2. OK, when you save that file name, it brings up the Locate Color Range Database Editor. And you see we've got our values. Our average values are in the left-hand box here, right? And it's still showing a single color, but to help us out, what we're going to do is we're going to take this single color here, which is the value that we've got here, and we're going to convert it to a range. And essentially what a range does is it takes this number, the spectrum number. Now, you can increase this to whatever you want. 15, 20, 30, whatever. What this does is when you convert to range, it will increase or decrease each one of these values by this number, 10. So we will have a start color and an end color. The values that you see here will be our midline. The start color will be 10 points under this, 10 points under this, 10 points under this. Our end color will be 10 points above this, and this, and this. So let's go ahead and convert it to range. Boom. And as promised, there you go. We're 30, 50, 82, 102, 202 to 222. And we are also given a representation of the colors right here on the right-hand side in these thumbnails. Now, we're going to forget about this for the moment. This is another specialty tool that's for an advanced class, and right now we don't really need it because this is a quick start. So with that, we're going to say OK. We're going to click on OK down here, and it's going to save our blue hat 2 as a color database. Now that is there for us forever and ever and ever. We can use that anytime we want. Anytime we pull up locate, we can open up that database and put it in there. So we're going to close out the view window. If you look in the upper left hand corner, it shows you right there. It shows you the version number and shows you what you're in. You're in the viewer. So you can close that out and puts us back to the main screen. So to begin our search, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a color database. And down here is the Start button that kicks off the search. So if we just didn't do anything, if we just clicked on Start button, it's going to give us an error message. It says, no color range is selected. Uh, OK, so we can fix that. Click OK, and we can do an Add. And it brings up all of our color database files. Here's all of them. I've done a bunch of them. You know, this is, we, we've kind of experimented with a bunch of different things on this particular search. So I'm going to select my blue hat 2, and I'm going to open it. 
Okay. This puts blue hat two into our color database, and now we can start our scan. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. I had some files left over. It's going to ask me if I want to delete them. I'm going to say yes. And over on the right-hand side, you'll see the process is starting, and it's starting to move through the images. And you can see its progress as it goes. Over here, as promised, the image is processed are cranking right along. We have zero so far. We've gone through 11 images, 12 images so far, and we have no hits. So right now, we'll just let it run for a little bit. And as you can see, it's going through these images pretty quick. And if you really want to get down into it, you can look at each one of these process lines. You can see that Locate says that it found zero clusters in that particular image. Zero, zero, zero. You can see, okay, you can confirm that it's not actually finding anything. So we'll let that run for a little bit. One of the things that we want to stress with Locate is that you need to experiment with this. You need to find out what works for you. And there's going to, the only way you're going to be able to do that is to, to go in here and use Locate, pull in some of your old searches, uh, you know, put in a group of pictures that you, you just collected when you were out on a flight, and, and try to find something in those pictures, something that's, that's difficult. Don't make it easy on yourself. Find something that's really small in the pictures. That's the way you learn the power of what we've given you here with Locate because it's significant. When you can find things as small as uh, a brass bullet casing at 200 feet, that's significant. I have found a red car under a tree canopy. Everybody says, oh, well, you can't find anything in a tree camp if it's deep tree canopy, but that's not the case because there is something that will peek out that you will find. And I have done so, found a red car in a heavy canopy just because a few pixels happen to be peeking out through the leaves and locate found them. So we really encourage you to just kind of get in and, and use the process. And when, if you get confused and you don't know why you're not getting hits or that sort of thing, just go ahead and reset to zero and start again and start building your way back up until you start getting hits. Okay, one of the things that you can tell right away is that you know, our, our color definition is really narrow. And one of the things that is really important to consider is that you have a condition what is known as altitude fade. As you get further and further away from a picture, even of the same object, the colors shift because you've got atmosphere in between them. You've got air, you've got moisture, you've got smoke, dust this, that, and the other thing. You've got to take those things into account. So even though we have an accurate sample of what we're looking for, Locate still hasn't found it because it is a very narrow search. So we've completed it, and we don't have anything there. So let's see what we need to do to kind of open things up a little bit. Let's set, select our blue hat, too, and we'll edit it. Well, one of the things that, and the easiest thing that we can do is increase the, the, the spread. So just for grins, let's go ahead and increase the spread. Over here, you see this increase button right here? I can do increase once. See the numbers change up here? They, they've gone further down the range. I can do it twice. Let's just do it twice and see what happens. We've opened it up twice, and you look how the colors have changed significantly over here. So we click on OK, and we click Start again. Here we go. Starts. It says it's queued up 149 images, and we are cranking through the images now.
Typically, Locate will run images on a, on a fairly reasonable computer. It'll do about two images a second, maybe 1.8, 1.7 images per second, depending on what other processes you got going on. But uh, it's, it's pretty quick. Okay, now, if we look over here, we've got one. We found, oh, there's two. Now we got two images. That have been selected. Now, we don't need to wait until all this processing gets done. We can go ahead and click the viewer now. Okay? And there's the viewer. And I, if you remember, I changed my boundary color to black, which is very dark, because this is a, a, a light background. So you look at the images, and where is that black circle? Well, the black circle is right here at the edge of the images. You're wondering, what the heck is that? So down at the bottom, you have a series of keys that you can use to manipulate that image. One of the most important things that you'll want to remember is zoom to object. So whatever is circled, whatever is circled in that image, if you press Z, Z, Zulu, or press this key, zoom to object, it will zoom right into it. This is a very, very powerful tool for search and rescue, especially when time is of the essence. And if you look at this, you can see that, well, uh, yep, there's some blue, and each one of these little X's right here tells me that, yep, it, it found a color that matched that's not what we're looking for. We can see that by this square shape, that's a car. Okay, well, that doesn't fit what we're looking for, so we will ditch it. We will archive that. Okay? No good. And it moves on to the next one. Well, there's the next picture. The drone moved over, and there's the car. We don't need to see that either. So we're going to archive that. Okay. Now it's getting more interesting. Hmm, wonder what that could be. So we're going to go down here and we're going to hit our Z on the keyboard. Wow. Look at that. Something in the trees there. And it will zoom in to that point. But if we need to zoom in further, we can use our mouse wheel and continue to zoom in. Look at that. That looks pretty good to me. Looks like it might be a pretty close match. That's some green and gray in here, too. Hmm, I'm going to flag that one. I want to save that one. I want to look at that one a little later on, or I want to tell somebody where that is. So I'm going to flag that one. So it flagged it, and it moved on to the next image. You see, we've got eight images in here. If we wanted to disallow this one and look quickly through the rest of them, there's another image. Hey, look, they're all stacking up right here in this one spot. Let's, let's zoom into that one. Yep, this is looking pretty compelling here. So we're going to flag that one too. Okay. Got another set of hits there. Yep. Looking good. And we've got all these images that are coming up, different angles. This one's even better. Wow, look at that. That's even better. Not only do we see the blue hat, but we've got green and gray in there. It's looking very closely like what we've got. This is, this is a solid hit here. So we're going to flag that one. Go through each one of these images and look, they're all in the same spot. We got to the end of them. This is great. This is looking really, really good. So what we want to do then is, since we've got them flagged, we want to generate a report. And the output reports are dated. You don't have to give them a name. If you want to, there's one right there. So we can go ahead and save it. And it produces a PDF file. Boom. There's our PDF file. Now, this is very obviously, since it's a portable document file, 
It is very portable. We can send this to anybody. It's very small. It has information that a searcher or ground searcher would need, your incident command would need, whoever your search coordinator would need. It gives him exactly what he needs to start dispatching his troops. You've got latitude and longitude right here. You've got uh, U.S. National Coordinate System right underneath that. And then, interestingly enough, if you have Google Maps, and if you do have internet, you can click on the hyperlink, and it will give you a Google Map, all contained in that one single portable document file. We can bring up satellite image on the map. It shows us in context where it should be, how to get there, the road that brings you closest to where that target is. You are saving your search coordinator valuable resources because they can go directly to the target and not have to walk this entire area to find that one blue target. Okay, so we'll close out of that and go back to our Yeah. So we generated our report, and now we can send it. Remember that results folder? That's where it's going to be. So we can close out of that one, close out of the viewer again. And I have to keep doing this because I'm presenting. And it puts us back to the main screen. Now, from here, we can generate a quality report. Same thing. It tells you just exactly how many images you've cranked through how long it took it, search method was color range, did you have any errors, and what color range did you use? Total number of individual colors is 216,000. That's certainly better than the 1 and 16.8 million odds we would have had if we used a single pixel. So with that range that we selected, we're still looking at only a fraction of the number of pixels that are available in an image, but it's still significantly better than the one in 16.8 million. Went through 149 images, we found 11 target images. Here's your coordinates for your search area. Pretty cool. Current tab. And we'll close this current tab as well. Okay. So that pretty much wraps up the Bloodhound method of using locate to begin scanning your pictures. Again, the 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 sample picture can be anything. It can be from your cell phone. If you're wearing blue jeans, take a picture of your blue jeans. And you can bring it in and use it as a sample to start with. Uh, just recognize that, you know, you can go in here and edit and, and start everything at zero. But, again, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I can set all these to zero and set this one to 255. And you're going to be those sorts of colors really don't occur in nature. You're not going to get a 00, 255 out of any color that you collect with your camera because the red and the green channel kick in to give you hue and saturation. So it's very important to, to remember what those values are for. Uh, the, the, the highest values are cartoon colors, and then the mixed values are more what we are custom seeing as humans with the, uh, the standard issue Mark I eyeball. So that's the most important thing to remember. I'm going to close that out because I don't want to mess up my, my deal. So from there, we will throw open, I guess, some questions. We'll turn on the, the chat side. And I think we've already gotten a bunch of them. Da, 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 da. Okay. Carl is cranking it up there for us. Minecraft. Yep. Okay. 
Carl asked the question, what's a reasonable computer, AMD, Intel, i5 or 7? Uh, yes, i5 works perfectly. Any laptop that is, you know, a reasonable laptop that will run Windows 10 will run Locate just fine. Uh, your MacBooks, they will run them just fine. Um, can you use it for footsteps? Yes. If you get enough differentiation and color between the soil, especially on um, plowed earth, you could do that. Yeah. Uh, yes, it gives GPS coordinates. Um, get the Latin lawn with the PDF. Uh, the shadow projection on the ground, I figure the hour of the day survey will impact on the results. You are absolutely correct, sir. Uh, and you really have to get into a little bit of photography as well. Because if you look at white balance, you, all, you have a white balance that you can set in just about every camera, including all the DJI material, all the... the Anybody that does a digital camera, you can set the white balance, and that will set your your hue and your saturate, saturation, and that will affect what the color, what the perceived color is. I'm going to go up a little bit. Um, the best height to shoot the pictures at. Okay, there's something called ground sampling distance that you need to consider. That is the smallest item that you can pick up per pixel. Typical ground sampling distance for mosaics and that sort of thing, if you use PIX4D, is about 1.75 inches per pixel. So if you have a shoe, for example, a shoe is a little bit more than 1.75, so you should be able to pick up a shoe fairly reasonably. Um, Yeah, yeah, 1.75 is going to be about it. As we move up, as the, the cameras get more sophisticated and we get more and more megapixels packed in the same sensor, you're going to be able to get that ground sampling distance down, way, way down. And it's going to be a, a, a great asset to us. But for now, even using a 12 megapixel camera, you can find a person fairly easily. Um, so the best height, typically, if you're using a any of the the ground control softwares that are available, like Pix4 Capture or Leechy or UCGS or even uh, DJI, uh, they typically want to run you 180 to 220 feet. That's fine if you're looking for a person. Uh, you'll still be able to get significant detail out of that. So 200 on average is great. Um, is internet required to run this in the field? Absolutely not. You do not need internet to run locate in the field. That was one of the things that we absolutely insisted on. Um, I have been on many searches where you're out in, you know, BFE somewhere way out in, in the boonies and there is no internet. So it's got to Got to got to be uh, something that is portable and that we can use in the field. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I got a compliment, handsome guy. Great. I don't think that way most of the time, but. Okay, got a question. Will this run on raw photos or just JPG? You know what? Uh, raw photos have to be developed, so. You know, you can change so many of the parameters when you're developing a raw photo that, you know, being able to pack all that into one analytic is going to be pretty tough. So right now we're just doing JPEG images. Wait till the new FAA rules kick in. We are watching FAA as a pilot. I watch FAA rules very, very closely. So with that, I think that will conclude our uh, last picture you used had direct sunlight. Yes, that, that is correct. And again, that's why you set the range. You want to 
you want to set the range so that it includes all potential possibilities. Okay, well, I think that that is going to conclude our presentation now. If you have any other questions or if you need to send suggestions or anything else to us, you can send them to support at locate.life or sales at locate.life. I do believe that's it. Otherwise, just check on the website. You can contact us many different ways there, but if you go to the website, www.loc, the number eight, dot life, and we will be able to answer your question. If we can't, we'll figure out a way to get it done. We appreciate your attendance and appreciate your use of Locate. Be safe. Go out there and make a difference.